if your goal is to learn this. Then keep watching. Hey guys, my name is Zach Ferguson, and this channel is all about helping you guys reach your tricking goals. I may not be the best tricker, but hopefully my experience can help you guys become the best. This is a tutorial on a rise. It was requested by one of my students and my friend, Kat. Before we get started, I just wanted to mention that it's raining outside right now, so this is the lighting that we're gonna get. Hopefully it's not too soft, hopefully I can fix it in post, but if you didn't notice or if I don't notice, then I won't say anything about it or I'll cut this part out of the video. In this tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to get a rise without any progressions whatsoever, but I would highly recommend having the progressions, you just don't have to. The reason I say that is because I have personally taught people how to do a rise in like 30 minutes just at the gym and they had no prerequisites to their name and they just learned it. So it's not impossible to do this, but if your body isn't just made to do a rise, then it's gonna be hard to conceptualize how to do this without progressions. So I'd recommend having a Sailor Moon or a Gumby or both before starting this. A tornado kick can also help a ton, but it's not completely necessary because I'm gonna take you from zero to rise in this video anyway. Anyway, let's do the quick tutorial. So, what is a rise? A rise is a slightly more inverted Sailor Moon where you don't touch the first hand. That's it. So if you have a Sailor Moon, you just gotta do it really hard and not put your hand on the ground. Bam, method one, done. Tutorial's over, see ya. But seriously, if you have a Sailor Moon and it's really good, then a rise is gonna be disgustingly easy for you because progressions are just the easiest way to learn anything. But sometimes people don't understand progressions and maybe aren't having much success with a Sailor Moon, so there are different ways to teach it. I've even taught a student off of a tumble track one time because he had a Webster on his bad side, so I just taught him to do a Webster half and then turn more on a 45 degree angle and then he had a really good rise. So there's multiple different ways to learn it. We're mainly going to go over two different ways, the Sailor Moon way and the tornado or cheat way. This is the way that Kat says I trick her into doing a rise. So the first way is having a really good Sailor Moon. I'm gonna refer you to my Sailor Moon tutorial. If you go watch that and you follow all of my tips on that, then all you're really gonna to have to do is a couple different changes to make it a rise. So now that you have your Sailor Moon perfect, all you're gonna do is when you step over and you drop your chest to get your hand to the floor, when you kick that leg, you just turn around immediately and try to keep your eyes on the floor the entire time. If you do your Sailor Moon and you keep your eyes on the ground, then you're automatically going to invert if you are still looking at the ground. So try your best to keep your eyes where you want to land your foot. Uh, for example, if I'm looking at you guys, it's kind of this bridge motion with my leg up. <laughs> but you want to keep your eyes on the ground for that. So the higher you can lift this leg in the back, the better. Remember, the left leg is your power in this move. Your arms help, your momentum initially helps, but your left leg is your power. So you want to die. So you want to really lift and arch and keep your eyes on the ground if you can. 
So try to do some sailor moons, but keep your eye on a point where you wanna land your foot. This will cause it to invert a little bit more and it will honestly look a little bit better because you'll be lifting your legs closer to a 45 and it just looks more like a flip and it, it will just be more impressive to a lot of people. You can go back to Gumby and work on that also because a rise is just a no-handed Gumby, but it's not necessary because I didn't even have good Gumbies until like a couple years ago and I've had a rise for a long time before that. But it can help you, especially for the awareness and the spotting. So if you're having trouble spotting where you wanna land, try to do some Gumbies and think of them as rise. You wanna focus on kicking that leg backwards really, really hard and making your hands almost a, like an accessory, like you're just barely touching them when you're doing your Gumby if your goal is to turn it into a rise. But yeah, I mean, really short, that's method one. Do a Sailor Moon, miss your hand, you gotta rise. Or like, do a Gumby and like, don't touch your hands on the ground. It's that easy, right? But for me, it was not that easy to learn. So I will walk you through how I learned it because I tried to make it a flip over and over again and I couldn't understand the hip turn and I couldn't understand what I needed to do. So I did it this way. So after I basically had a rise for a while, I actually went back and relearned it this way to help myself get the shape better and to make it easier to swing through. So this is the way I'd recommend to do it if Sailor Moon or Gumby are not working for you. That way is turning your tornado or honestly just cheat step into a rise. The only reason I specified cheat step and not tornado kick is because with students, if I teach them do a tornado kick and then stop kicking, a lot of times it's just hard for them to actually stop kicking. So the key to this method is going to be understanding how your hips turn. If you can master that part, then you've got all of it. But we're gonna focus on that a little later. So for now, we're gonna think about our rise as a kick. So remember, with our kicks in tricking, we want to have our target in front of us. Again, our target could be over here, it doesn't matter. So for the video's purpose, I'm going to make you guys my target. That means that because I twist to my left, my momentum is gonna be going that way, okay? Now that kind of looks weird on the camera, that way. So what you wanna do is you want to step over so that your back is to your target and then pivot on your right foot and outside crescent kick. Practice this until it's really smooth. So if it's really clunky, then you just have to practice more. As you get used to this, you can cover more distance sideways and it will help you gain more momentum. Once you can do your 180 step outside crescent, then you're going to spin on that foot that you just crescented and turn into eagle position. And then just like with the Sailor Moon, you can start hopping. At this point, it's important to remember where your momentum is going. So if you guys are my target, I want to step over that way and actually end facing that way. It's not important that you jump high right now or get your chest down. It's just important that you jump, you turn around and you turn all the way that way and you have your right leg behind you in an eagle position. After that, we're gonna try and get some height. So for this, we're actually going to abandon the eagle position for just a minute, and we're going to do a cheat 360. So a pop 360 looks like this, and we're going to do a cheat 360. So like one of the easiest kicking tricks you can think of. To do this, all you have to do is focus on getting your crescent kick, head height or higher, and jumping from your right leg to your left leg while you do your cheat step. So you just step over, spot your target, and jump and outside crescent at the exact same time. On this, land on only the left leg, but it doesn't matter where you land in terms of eagle or not. Once you get better at this, that's when you wanna add your eagle. Once you have your cheat 360 and you are turning into your eagle, it's time to start raising your hips a little bit. To do this, you're going to do a dance move that I've heard called a calypso. What you do is you step over for a cheat setup and then you spot the ground behind you, you lift that leg and you actually push your hips forward towards your target and turn into that eagle position. At this point, you're kind of just doing a low rise. So now what you wanna do is you wanna start kicking backwards more for the rise. When you kick backwards, you also wanna step forwards. So it turns from doing a cheat setup where you don't worry so much about where you're planting your feet to an important foot placement. In a lot of my examples, you'll see that my foot is still actually facing backwards, but it's something that I need to work on. And if your trick is perfect, then are you, are you ever still really growing, you know? So when you're doing this, make sure that you are stepping forward forward towards your direction of momentum. So you're starting facing your target and then you step over and you're 
facing that way with your foot and then you start kicking backwards as if you're doing an aerial or something and then you initiate the turnaround. You can also do the step and do the kickback, turnaround, arch your back motion that I showed you in my Gumby tutorial and you can really kind of get the feel for this. This is the part that I would say is almost the most important. What you want to do is take your calypso and you want to try to stare at the ground while you do it. So again, look at where you want to land. Your body is going to follow your eyes. So wherever you're looking, your feet are going to land there. So my personal rule for this is if you're kicking, then look at your target because your foot is going to go to where you're looking your target and if you're flipping or inverting at all look at the floor unless you're also doing a kick so for example if i'm doing a full hyper hook i'm doing a 45 degree flip with a twist with a kick or if i'm doing a b twist round i'm doing a flat spinning twist with a kick so i'm not focused on where i'm landing i'm focused on where i'm kicking because if i kick properly then my body is naturally going to land Make sure you are pushing your pelvis forward. Squeeze your glutes and push your hips forward and this is what creates the rise motion. Again, it's not so much about how flexible your back is, more about how flexible your hips are. So the more you can do a front split, the easier and the better your rise is going to be. If you feel like your legs are too close together and you cannot do a rise shape, then you might want to work on your front split. For me, that would be my left leg in front and my right leg in back. The eagle position is just a, a front split in the end. If you can do all that smooth, then it's time to commit to your rise. What you want to do is you want to step over and drive your right shoulder towards the floor and do your calypso and try to keep your eyes on the ground. If Even if you lose the ground for a split second, then turn your head really fast so that you can see the ground over your left shoulder and then eagle as hard as you can. The reason you want to eagle as hard as you can is because the whole shape is an eagle. If you learn a good rise, then you can just end any swing through trick with a rise motion and you'll have a solid eagle. So you can start a B twist and then when you want to go to land, you just think rise and then you'll be able to swing it or do whatever you want out of it. You'll have a strong eagle and you'll have your chest up at the end. Common mistakes are not eagling enough, focusing too much on the chest so your chest is down but your legs stay low so you don't actually flip, not spotting the ground. Sometimes if you don't spot the ground, you'll either twist too much and you're curled up. If you're twisting too much, then it means you're not arching. You're in a hollow position like this. And if you are flipping, you're probably losing sight of the ground and doing more of a Webster. So you wanna make sure to go back to one of the other progressions so that you can be safe and not just yeet yourself into the grass over and over again. Cause I'm assuming you are still not in the gym when you're watching this. If you're still having trouble with the motion and you want a teaching tool, you can actually use something about waist high like a bed to get yourself used to the motion with your lower body. So what you do is step forward along the bed with your right foot and then you lay down on the bed, you turn and look behind you on your left side and as you do that you kick your left leg backwards and hold it in the air then you use that leg to guide you to the floor you can use your hands on this because really you're just focusing on your lower body and the form and what you're supposed to do but you turn and make sure that your foot lands facing backwards to where you started so if i start facing this way then i want to turn and face that way at the end and yes the footboard does hurt my hips when I do this. You're welcome. But that's it. You can do a rise. Don't think you can't. Don't give me any excuses. Do your rise. Cat, like I'm not even that flexible. I got a lot of work to do. I can't even do a bridge that great. I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get my splits and stuff. My rise can be way better. My rise don't look that good in this tutorial, but I'm doing it anyway. But guys, that's about it. Rise was an extremely frustrating trick for me to learn, so hopefully this can help you to not be as frustrated and you can get it a lot faster than I did. Please help me on my quest to a thousand subs so I can monetize and feed this sweet girl. And until next time, please stay safe and healthy and I'll see you guys later.